Okay, so uh, we're getting started today with um, making an invoice on uh, Office 20, uh, what is it, 2010, I think, or 2012, no, 2010. And we'll be using the Excel starter, which comes with most uh, notebooks, at least from the, the ones that I bought so far. So we'll be making a simple invoice for the purpose of giving it to a client if you're in distribution or if you do services of any kind maybe you uh, do home repair or maybe you sell to a little store as a wholesaler or maybe you have some kind of uh, a business that makes uh, desks, tables, I don't know, chairs uh, even if you sell parts for like let's say car parts uh, that you buy and then distribute or wholesale uh, you can close or maybe you sell jewelry or something on a wholesale basis or even if you just sell directly you would be able to use something like this you know just to keep track of whatever you sell and then for your clients to have the security that you know you're running your business so let's get started. First, I would go in and then just put a title, and of course, we'll be able to change this up, make it look nicer once we're done with this. So, I, first, I would put in an invoice, a title, and then the name of your business and your address, including your city and state and zip code, and a date, space. Uh, for example, this is January 12, 2012. And then uh, we'll move in to adding uh, the more details that come in an invoice. Uh, typically, you will have to add some, somebody to bill, bill your, uh, your services. So I, I'll just put something like this, like bill to. And then this will be the address. And let's let's format it a little bit. So let's go and see. We can change it later. So just to get to add some kind of form to your invoice. There you go. And if you can see, there's a border now. Let's preview it. So if you go print, wait. There you can see the preview, your invoice, right there. Let's exit. Uh, let's go to home. Okay, so now you, you have some kind of uh, area so you can uh, develop your invoice. By that I mean this. So you have a bill too, and let's say, let's cut it in half, something like that. And you need some space for a whole address and telephones, let's say. Okay, this is space for your address, or fax, or telephone, and maybe um, whatever else you have. So let's give it a couple boxes. Address, phone, fax, and some other things. So let's format this and uh, give it a border, basically. That's what I mean. And then you have to deliver or to ship. I mean, a ship to address because sometimes they are different. You gotta keep that in mind. Their clients have businesses and maybe they have multiple locations. So here we go. Build to, ship to, and usually I would put like address, or this would be like the name, and then the address. So I usually try and, and let's say connect you by adding a border. And then maybe you want to put an address right here. 
another border, another border, and then maybe you want to put a phone, and then fast, and then you came over here, phone, and fast. You know, we'll do the same thing, add another border, and the border, border, border. So usually there's some weird information that something you want to put in, like add, I don't know, something like the name of the ramp or I don't know, something. So uh, just leave it blank. I always leave it blank. And now we move into the next part of the invoice. Uh, this is where we put, like, let's say, the terms, like the terms of of the sale or customer information, customer number or PO number. So let's just fix that. Uh, for now, I can see some edits. So let's say this is the customer PO number or customer number. And usually you need a space right here. So I'll hit a, I'll put a border there. And then what Another thing that I do with mine, I usually put a, like a due date or something, terms or due date, if it's just a straight uh, sale. Like let's say you basically to give you a, an order and you send them the invoice and whenever it's due, and you put the date here. And then I would go into over here and add order days, basically when was the order made. Because the invoice could be made different than the order on a different day. And then we go into adding shipment date. Sometimes you pay before. So if they paid already, you would put something like a shipping date, a ship date. And then carrier. Carrier is it's, it's the freight basically. So who are you using for freight? UPS, I don't know, private, some kind of freight company, or they're delivering or they're picking up. This is where you will put this information. And so let's see all of these. I, I would just put a border in there. And same thing. Oh, actually, these are merging. Um, so. Now you have a better formed uh, invoice so far. So far, we have the invoice title, the name of your business, your address, including zip code, the date of this invoice, the bill to information, the including phone and fax. It ships to information including phone and fax and then we customer number or PO number whatever you use or you're using terms or due date you know whenever you're gonna collect or the way you're gonna collect and order date when the order was ordered the date the order was placed and then the shipment date and then the way it's gonna be shipped carrier freight and Great information. And okay, we continue on. Usually I like to put uh, some kind of line to show that this is a little, um, maybe a, something like that. And this shows to me that this, is, this top part is information, and then now we're, uh, I guess, going into the actual invoice. 
And then I'll put a tape border around it. Okay, so now you put in the, the information for the, the purchases. Item ID. Uh, if you use item ID, item number, whatever you use. And then description, I usually go into describing what the item is. And then usually I put in like maybe there's cases. Um, let's go into the end and put amount or total. total and then price and I usually put a quantity for case because a lot of times I it, you, you sell it by fees but you deliver it in cases uh, if you're in the business I guess you should know what I mean like for example, like um, let's say you're selling cookies, you're not gonna uh, package them on I mean, or sell pallets of separated cookie boxes. You're probably gonna sell a uh, pallet of boxes with units in it. And this is basically uh, bags. Oh, sorry about that. That, that was quantity. Huh? I use bags sometimes instead of quantity, depending on the on the sale. So this is the number of cases. Usually I just put cases, but I guess you could put number of cases, and then I usually merge these. So merge and. Go all the way down and like that. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now I have item, number, or ID, description, and then cases, uh, quantity per case, price, and total. So usually I would go in. Just going all the way down, I guess. There you go. And then I would erase this one also. So delete. Alright, let's take so we're almost done with it. So let's take a look at it. So friend preview. And you here you can see how it's gonna look. So you see, this is pretty much okay now. So now, basically, you have the invoice, the date, uh, your business name and address and whatnot, uh, shipping of, I mean, bill to information, ship to information, and then customer number, PO order information, time to date, and uh, order date, ship date, and carrier date. And here you want to fix this part, and of course all these borders you gotta fix them. So let's go back and fix them. Right here, I will just merge it. Now you have, you know, more space. And um, yeah, the border was. Or maybe you want to make this a little bit bigger. Well, 
let's mark this. And then our center in there. There you go. Now a little bit small. This is 24 this. So we have this. Let's make the border all over. So let's use a fake border just to make it look better. And let's take it out and see how it looks. So now see invoice. It looks a little bit big, so you might want to make it smaller. I'm okay with it. It's up to you, Kate. Or you can put it in the middle or something. It's up to you. The invoice, stage, close. I mean, the name of your business and address. The bill to information, tip to. Customer information. Uh, terms of your uh, transaction. And then order date, tip date, carrier information. So now let's, uh, let's create these. Or make borders for you. Let's go back. Oh, let's see. What else do I have? Cases, bags, everything up there. Merge. I'm gonna quickly merge these. Sorry, I'm doing some mistakes here. <laughs> okay, let me merge this. And now I can do it. See, sometimes you just gotta uh, relearn things. It's not a big deal. Just try and uh, work with the program. It's pretty easy, actually. So see, now I, I did I did the border again. So let's do the border again. I'm not very good with this, so don't think that I'm a pro or something. Because I'm not. The only reason I do this is to make money. Or <laughs> to keep my customers happy basically by giving them an invoice. Uh, so let's do this. Now there we go. Oh, so I gotta do the border again. Some of you out there might have a better way, of course, if you more experience with this. But this is the way I do it right now. It's been working out pretty good for me. And I don't have to pay anything for the software or the making of the invoices. Okay, so now we have, uh, it's almost done. We still need a little bit more. Uh, we already have the finished part of the invoice. The invoice, the date, and everything, all the information, and the item IDs, and uh, the shipping and terms date, um, and terms and all that stuff. Now let's go to add uh, a little bit protection for us, I guess. Let's say I would like to. I usually want to put 20 items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22. Let's, let's make this blank. And let's clear format or clear. Yeah. 
Here content and here format. Uh, here content first format. Oh, let's not do that. Here. And let's undo and my so basically I erased what I did. And now let, let me put another border. Well it's the same border just after we do it again. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I'm gonna add something to it on the bottom. And because I use cells, sell people and your brokers or anybody that wants to sell my product. I usually put a sale made by or whoever did the sale box. And then I require my, my salespeople or my buyers to sign invoices. So usually I put a box, buyer, signature, and this could be anybody. I mean, the wrap for the buying company or anything. And make some space. Uh, right there. And let's say we merge them. And also, I <clears throat> I usually want, of course, to add like I know some kind of information, like if the order is canceled or you know the terms not follow the so first let's let's add the subtotal of course subtotal and then I put other you know just in case maybe sometimes you have taxes or whatever let's do it over here to give it more space subtotal and other And the total, I guess. So usually, right here, I put tax, or I don't know, maybe charge for shipping, or something like that. And sometimes I put shipping over here, and then let's say uh, if there's some kind of weird charge that you have to charge, like gas or something. I don't know, it depends up to you. So I just box it up. And then now, over here is where I put my term. So I will put terms right here. Like, by that I mean terms like, uh, for any, and capital letters. So they can see cancel order a fifteen percent uh restocking fee will apply. And I learned throughout time that you have to put this well, you have to start some kind of restocking fee because a lot of times people order stuff and they, they don't even want to buy it or they don't have the money to buy it. So I try to put information so they know that I'm not uh, playing games or I'm selling for reals and I expect to collect or I don't expect to get it back unless there's a problem with the item. And I usually put my address here. Uh, let's say, what was it? Closing one. Oh, you can just make it like equal. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Oh, no, it's in this tenth item. Okay, so clothes and more. Clothes and more. And then faces. What is it? Faces, clothes, faces, clothes. Clinton Way. By the way, Clinton Way is a, a street nearby me. Fresh no. Oh, I have a Fresno, California, 95616, wait, 95626. Okay, so there we have it. We have an address. And then a lot of times I will put in my, the thing, my address right here. Another thing. For my protection, of course, account not paid in full with in terms are subject are subject to a ten percent uh, monthly finance. Charge plus all legal fees to collect. I'm not a lawyer or anything like that, so uh, don't quote me on these things, on the legality of them, but I use them. Uh, okay, so there you have it. I used to put this in bold because it's my address. And then I, I'm i going to do another border on this. Okay, so let's take a look at it and see how it looks. That's pretty much done. There we go. We have our invoice title, day, you can build to and fit to, and your business address and stuff. Uh, the customer information, the, the terms of the uh, invoice, and then the order date, ship date, carrier, item numbers, ID, descriptions, uh, the uh, cases. Number of cases, a quantity per case, price, and total. Subtotals and other fees, and the total for the, the grand total, I guess, and the sale made by whatever rep you have, and the buyer signature, and of course, uh, information regarding orders, cancel orders, and this is some editing right here, and we stocking fee, and then we have our address again at the bottom. And maybe you want to put in your phone number. I'm not sure. I usually don't put my phone number because uh, I use my personal number. And accounts not paid in full. This is another legal thing that I use. Accounts not not paid in full with the insurance or subject to 10% monthly finance charge plus all legal fees to collect. Uh, basically, what I think this means, I mean, for me, it's that if you do not pay me within the terms or the due date, I will, you know, legally, I'm telling you that I do have the opportunity to go back and collect those plus the 10% monthly charges on that principal. Um, that's a lot, actually, if you really think about it. It's better to just pay up. And then I have a lawyer that would go in and do all the work. And then I don't have to worry about it since I did this already. It, it's a lot. It's a lot of work to collect. So make sure to put something like this, like that. Your customers know that you are aware that they might do that, and then that you know how to collect or that you, you know the way to collect. So just put that in there. And of course, uh, for the cancel orders too, that's the same thing. If somebody wants to buy from you, just tell them that. 
to cancel the order, you have somebody that will go and collect that 15% that you're talking to. And that's pretty much it. So now, let's fix this little thing right here. Where is it? Okay, there we go. It's a little weird, so I'm gonna go back and fix this. See why it looks weird. Let's take a look at it again. Let's just try and make it look nice, I guess. And that's pretty much it. And of course, if you already know how to use this, this will be useful. And then you sum up all of these. Alright, never mind. So, equals sum. Of that and all of those, that'll be the sum, and this will be the sum of all of these, and then that, and there we go. So if you put, like, let's say $23, 24, 32, of course, and you're gonna get that. Okay, so. I'm showing you that you just add the basically you should know how to use Excel a little bit so but if you don't then I showed you how to put in the information so you can automatically add them. Oh, oh well. Alright, I guess I'll show you again some and then you highlight these cells that have your total and then parentheses again and then that's it but I usually keep them blank just because sometimes you have to do it by hand okay so we're done for today uh, we have a finished uh, invoice already it looks okay I mean it's not fancy but it's useful that's what we're going for here. Simple, useful. Uh, you have all the information that you need. Uh, whenever you, let's say you look back at a sale, you have the terms, the customer number, order date, the day it was shipped, the carry you use, the place where you build it to, and then, of course, the place where you shipped it, uh, the name of your business at the time, if you change maybe, the sale made by a certain rep, and then the buyer who signed it, and of course, the total and subtotals. And yes, you have the information that you did uh, uh, stated that there is, you know, 15% charge for canceled orders, and of course, if you have your address, and throw in your phone number if you use the office, and of course, you do have that 10% monthly charge if they do uh, defaults on your terms for due date, and that's pretty much it. So keep on doing business. And I'll see you guys next time.